What is up, YouTube? I am so happy today to bring to you something more refreshing from the aspect of health and fitness. I just launched my app. Um, this is not a plug just yet anyway, but just to let you know, I just launched my app a couple days ago and I've been helping people find their macros. But here's the thing. A lot of this stuff, I've just been on the computer and emailing and typing and helping people out that way. When really what I wanna to do today, I just wanna talk because some of these concepts are better heard out loud before you start applying them. And some of the things I wanna talk about today with nutrition and diet and health and losing weight, it's really just gonna be the nuances, the small things that I see people more often than not making those mistakes on. So you'll get the same thing every time. People will reach out to me looking for help, looking for you know, their first real lifestyle change. And they come to me, hey, I don't know what happened. I'm 45, 38, 27, all sorts of ages. And I really need to get my life back on track. And they're usually people who have tried keto. They've tried intermittent fasting. They've tried being a vegan. They've tried it all. And sometimes they'll lose 10 pounds and then gain 20 back. Um, sometimes they'll lose 50 pounds and gain all of it back. It just depends. But the truth is, is the real nuances behind a lot of this stuff lie in the mistakes. And the biggest mistakes come about when we're not making changes that are sustainable for the long haul. Because at the end of the day, you can make plenty, plenty of lifestyle changes. If they don't fit the lifestyle you're wanting to live, then at the end of the day, you're just losing weight for the short term. It's not gonna be something you can stick to. So here's the thing. Today, what I wanna break down, what I wanna talk about is none of the science that I usually love to talk about, none of the physiology that I went to school for, it's none of the specifics that happen inside the cells. We are just talking about lifestyle mistakes that everybody makes and nobody seems to really grasp when I talk about them because everybody wants a sexier, funner, more, you know, sort of grabby answer. So I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna break it down throughout the day. Um, I'm gonna think of four or five of the biggest ways that I think people are making common mistakes that are making them spin them, spin their wheels, spin them wheels, spin their wheels in the weight loss process. So let's get into it. That's what we're gonna do. I gotta get inside, put some groceries away. I just got back from the grocery store but we're going to start this talk and open this dialogue today. Hopefully by the end of this YouTube video, you will have found two or three of the mistakes you've been making and this will help you iron them out for the long haul. Let's do it. Okay, so I know this is gonna be hard to hear from my Italian counterparts out there. Um, as an Irishman myself, it wasn't so hard to quit this, but I know a lot of people out there love love to cook with oil. Now, oil isn't going to be the evil or bad guy in this conversation, but it is going to be the perfect, perfect way to segue into what I think is the first mistake that so many people make out there when they switch to healthy eating. Now, I'm going to label this topic hidden calories. Hidden calories. Now, the idea of a hidden calorie, in my opinion, is really in places where you think you're eating healthy, quote unquote, you're eating more calories than you're really aware of because of either one, you're drinking your calories in the form of juices, smoothies, whether you're going to nectar or Jamba juice every day, thinking because you're eating healthy food that um, you're eating under your maintenance calories in a position, putting yourself in a position to eat, let's say in a caloric deficit or eat on par with good macros. So what you're doing is, is you're telling yourself, hey, this meal is healthy because it's chicken, it's rice, it's brown rice pasta, it's a smoothie, whatever it is, so it must be healthy. But here's the thing, when the goal is weight loss or the goal is um, physique you know, gains or muscular structure or having just a lean body in general, the idea of healthy or organic or whatever you may frame it as for yourself is not the number one priority. The number one priority is lean body mass because at the end of the day, less body fat is a healthier body and that's going to be much more important to your longevity and your health than any organic food ever would be. Now, am I saying organic is not important? Of course not. 
Of course not. But really, when we're talking about hidden calories, we're looking at things like somebody may have went and bought chicken breasts, got them ready for their meals, and then cooked them in a pan full of olive oil, basically fried them, if you will, and thought to themselves, I'm just going to log this into my logging app, my fitness pal, or whatever, as chicken breasts. Here's the problem. We're talking about hundreds, hundreds of calories, maybe a thousand calories worth of olive oil that you can screw up on just by adding oil into that pan and not logging it, not counting it. Um, maybe you told yourself, I'm going to go get a protein smoothie every morning after the gym, and you didn't know that that protein smoothie had 135 grams of carbs in it or had you know, three scoops of peanut butter in it, and you're just telling yourself it's healthy, so it must be good for my goals. Now, I'm not saying that any foods are good or bad. That's not the goal here. Obviously, we know all food is welcome in just moderation. As long as it's not poison, you're all right. But what I am telling you is, is that there are calories that really are, or there are foods rather, that really are dense in calories because of the fact that they're just clean, organic, healthy, locally sourced, sustainable, all those things are great. They don't apply to how many calories you're eating. So you have to be very hypersensitive and aware when you're trying to lose weight of where these calories are coming from and checking in different places, looking in different places of when you're cooking, when you're adding things, how many calories, how many grams of fat, how many grams of carbohydrates does the oils, the sauces, the things that I'm using on my food actually have, okay? Get that figured out. Put that in a notebook, put a bullet point next to it and remember that because that is going to be huge for starting this journey. So remember, calories, grams of fat, grams of carbs, what are the macros on this food that you're eating? Everything you add, everything that goes into your stomach is a calorie. Um, of course, not water or zero calorie beverages, but things that go in still count whether or not they're healthy. Keep that in mind. Doesn't matter if the peanut butter is organic, or if it's skippy, still has grams of fat in it that need to be logged for your goals. We got it? Perfect, on to the next one. Biggest mistake number two, cheat days instead of cheat meals. Um, really what I'm trying to say is, is you'll notice if you, you know, get your macros from me or I start helping you out, is that I allow everybody or, I, you know, I'm not in charge of your life, but I re recommend that everybody give themselves a treat meal. Um, something you've been thinking about all week, something that you're just craving. Um, you pick a day, a time, you sit down, put on your favorite show, or just eat at the table, whatever it is. And you enjoy yourself one meal each week, including dessert in that meal, where you sit down, eat to your heart's content, whether it's, um, you know at a restaurant, if it's at home, if it's home cooked, whatever it is, make sure that it's something you were craving. When that meal is over, you stand up, you put it away, and you move on and get right back to the normal cadence of your healthy lifestyle that we've been working on so hard to cultivate. Now here's the problem. A lot of people think of this idea as a whole day or an eight hour window where they're just gonna wake up and eat like shit or binge eat for hours and hours on end. You don't understand how much damage you can do metabolically in an entire day. Now, I'm not telling you you need to obsess over these macros for the rest of your life. I'm telling you if the current goal, the current journey right now is to improve your body composition, I'm giving you an opportunity to make sure you give yourself like a two hour window to enjoy yourself and eat something you've been thinking about the goal isn't to binge eat yourself into oblivion and then wreck all of those caloric deficit days that you've put hard work into all week. So understand, there's a fine line, there's a balance. Every meal will pass. And at the end of that meal is another meal and another meal and another meal. Sure, some of them are gonna be chicken and rice. Some of them are going to be a little more boring than others. But understand there's another one coming. Don't keep yourself in this mindset that you're going to eat like there's no more food coming in the future. And this is coming from someone who's gone through this before of this idea of a cheat day, like you need to let loose for an entire day. There's no need for that. Wake up, have yourself a good, healthy omelet, you know, 
couple pieces of whole grain toast that you're looking forward to spray some butter like the spray parquet or whatever it is butter on those pieces of toast you've already started that first meal off in a way that i would consider personally enjoyable and you haven't broken the bank on anything you can log that into your phone whatever you want to do and that's just as enjoyable as sitting down well it's close to as enjoyable as sitting down and having home fries and all this crazy stuff you would you know normally crave for breakfast now here's the thing if that's really what you want, if that's what you're looking forward to and you wake up on Sunday and you're like, hey, today I really want to treat myself to a good breakfast and um, that's going to be my cheat meal, then that's absolutely fine. Do it. But understand that an entire day does a whole lot more damage than just one meal. And this one cheat meal needs to stay that way. It needs to just be one meal you get in, get out and get right back to the normal process that you've been on the whole time. So understand a day is not the end of the world if you slip up, if you have a bad day, we all do get back to the grind. But if you're planning this, plan that cheat meal. Tell yourself when that cheat meal is coming. Tell yourself where you're gonna go get it. Whatever, it's In-N-Out Burger. In-N-Out Burger is better than every other place. We're not gonna have that conversation here, but I'm just letting you know. Um, I'm not willing to have that conversation in the comments, so we can all agree In-N-Out's better um, than whatever your Texas version of it is. But seriously, one meal. We're just keeping it to one meal. Whatever you're thinking about, don't let it turn into a whole day, a whole weekend, a whole fuck up that doesn't need to be. You have the control over these situations if you plan it to be so. Okay? Perfect. On to the next one. We touched on this a little bit in the first, you know, portion of this video. But we're really going to get into it now because this is one of my biggest pet peeves. You'll hear people say it all the time. Um, you know, eating healthy is expensive. And while to a certain degree, I can kind of see where you're coming from. I never saved more money in my life than when I first switched in college. I first switched to a cleaner diet. I was eating less variety. I was eating just chicken breasts from, you know, Walmart and potatoes and rice, white rice, um, stuff like that, because that's what I could afford at the time. Um, honestly, still, but Here's where people make the biggest mistake. As soon as they switch to a healthier lifestyle, they stop shopping at Safeway, uh, wherever, Vons, Kroger's, whatever you have in your area. And they start shopping where? Trader Joe's, Sprouts, um, Whole Foods. You know, these places where the food really is extremely expensive. Why? Because this concept, this idea of non-GMO, um, organic, I don't, so many vegan, all these different options where they're putting the minutia before the bigger things, which is the bigger things we're talking about here. The most important things are body composition. Now, I'm the first person to tell you if I have a choice financially or I have a choice in front of me between grass fed beef and, you know, some fucking Walmart, you know, 80 20 beef, I'm obviously going to pick grass-fed if I'm in a fiscal or financial position to make that decision then that's fine but nine times out of ten I'm not picking these foods based on you know how organic how you know non-gmo whatever that they are if they were you know raised at a private school the chickens and then given you know massages and you know you see what I'm saying here so we're looking at this big picture what's sustainable are you going to be able to afford to eat all of these foods from Trader Joe's for the next 10 years, or are you gonna start breaking the bank, put yourself in a position where it's like all or nothing? Now all of a sudden, look what happened. You're telling yourself, I don't wanna go spend $200 at Trader Joe's for three days worth of food, so now I might as well just go to Walmart, buy a bunch of junk food, fuck up, fall off the wagon, and then we'll cross that bridge when I'm feeling so shitty that I guilt myself back into healthy eating again. No, no, no. You see, the most important thing, once again, body composition that's what kills more people in the world than anything else when we're talking about getting your life back on track when we're talking about making sure you don't end up with diabetes heart disease cancers these things have a way higher correlation with somebody who has a high body fat percentage so the first thing we need to prioritize is our body composition in which case you can buy a lot of these foods for the five for five deal at Safeway when they're you know they're selling eight pounds of chicken breast for 20 bucks or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. This is the position you need to put yourself in. Put yourself in the position to pick some organic foods when you can afford it and others when you can't. 
because at the end of the day, it's not an all or nothing. We are all in with counting our macros. We're all in with making sure we're trying to lose this fat off our body or get in better shape or build muscle, whatever the goal is. It doesn't mean that you need to eat the, you know, the Safeway, I mean, sorry, the Trader Joe's version of Triscuits for the rest of the, you know, 2021 year. That's not the case. You have choices. There is food, there are foods, you know, there are foods in this world that don't need to be organic to still be considered within the boundaries of keeping yourself healthy, keeping yourself alive and well, okay? So I understand there's an importance behind organic food. I understand there's an importance behind the sustainability of these foods. But the most important thing in this world right now is prioritizing your physical health. Put yourself in a position to be happier, healthier first. We'll figure out the minutia along the way, okay? So once again, the person behind the register where you're shopping does not have to have a Grateful Dead shirt on for your choices to be healthy choices for your lifestyle. So stop trying to label foods as healthy or not healthy and start making sure that it fits within the confines of what you should be eating in a day. Perfect. On to the next one. The last topic I want to bring up today, the last... Um, structured concept that I want people to grasp before we end this video is stopping the guesswork. Now, here's what I mean. I remember back when I first, first started reaching out to help other people with their nutrition. And this person told me first thing, oh no, I've got the food down. The food's fine. Um, it's the exercise I need help with. Well, they're overweight, right? So I'm thinking in my head, okay, that's great. I took their word for it. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you know, it seems like they're telling me they're eating chicken every day. Uh, not that you have to eat chicken every day, but you know, they had it pretty figured out. It seemed like chicken and rice was their go-to. Um, it seemed like they had it figured out, man. I didn't feel like I had anything to add to their diet structure based on what they were telling me. Here's the problem. You can 1000% gain weight eating any food in this world. It's possible. Is it likely that you're going to get fat eating only celery? No, obviously no. But if you exceed whatever your body needs for the day, you're going to store the excess in your body as fat, whether it's visceral, whether it's subcutaneous, it doesn't matter. You're going to store it as fat. Okay. So let's get that figured out a hundred percent. doesn't matter how healthy it is. If you eat beyond what you need for the day, you are likely to store that as fat. If you're overeating, doesn't matter what the food is. Swear to God. We understand that. If you want to argue with me on that, if you want to have convert, fine, go do it somewhere else because it's straight up math, straight to the point. You eat too much, you gain. That's it. We've got that figured out. We've got that ironed out. Now what's the next step? Well, if that's the case, you assuming you're eating underneath the calories you need for a day is an absolute fucking joke. You don't know. You really don't know. Just like we talked about the olive oil and the hidden calories in the beginning, Unless you are tracking, at least generally tracking your food every day, how do you really know? Now, here's where I want people that this is the caveat, right? If you've struggled with bulimia, with obsessive eating, with any sort of weird, um, it's not weird to have an eating disorder. You need to know that's not what I'm saying, but any sort of weird, strange relationship with food that's just out, out of the norm, obviously tracking for you might not be the first place you need to go to understand your relationship with food for the rest of us tracking it needs to be the baseline that you lie to understand how much you're eating in a day so we're not just guessing anymore we're done with that the guessing didn't work for you before it's not going to work for you now you obviously came to look for help because something wasn't working so stop telling people who are trying to help you, no, 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 the food's not the problem. I just need help with exercise because the food is the problem, straight up. If you didn't exercise a day in your life, you just lived a normal life and ate under your maintenance calories, you'd never gain any fat, straight up. Figure that out. We need to figure that out together by tracking, by understanding what you're eating in a day, by finding out where you're making these mistakes. And the only way to do that is pure transparency with yourself, honesty with what you ate in a day, and the understanding that there is a degree where we need to separate from our ego for a minute and understand the goal is weight loss or the goal is muscle gain, then we need to track. We need to find out what we need to be eating. We aren't going to get those answers through just counting calories. 
Calories don't represent the big picture. Calories represent just the framework. We need to know what's in those calories. We're talking about protein, carbs, and fat. So we're going to start tracking our macros straight up. There's no other way around this. If you're here to find out how you can gain muscle or lose fat, the problem is no longer, we're not able to guess to answer these problems anymore. You can't guess your way through these answers, okay? We need to get serious about it. And it's time to take it to a point where we're ensuring, we're ensuring that we know how much we're taking in in a day by pure transparency and a little bit of tracking. Now, once you hit your goals, if you want a month off, two months off from tracking, you want to go back to just a normal intuitive eating style, that's great. But we're not going to intuitive eat our way down to our goal, okay, or up to our goal. We need to track to get there. We need to see where we're going, okay? This is the map. This is the way we get there. And lucky, you know, for the current situation, I've actually chosen this. I, I hate to make this about me, but I've chosen to leave my normal nine to five job. Um, it's not a nine to five. It's more like a five to nine, to be fucking honest with you. Um, pretty brutal. But I've decided to leave that job and start helping people, literally helping them get through this hump, this part right here. Now, I made an app. That app is called Oak. O-H-K. It's in the app store. Um, and through this app, if you pay for premium, you get everything in it, including the macros, including the macros. You can get new macros every time you weigh in, every three to four weeks, you could get new macros and we'll just shape your goals along the way. Now, here's the thing. You're still going to have to learn how to do this. And inside the app, it will teach you how to track your macros. It'll do all that stuff for you. And the premium version of the app is not ridiculous. It comes with workouts. Um, it comes with my personal workouts as well. It comes with therapies. It comes with, you know, lectures that are more in-depth than these ones and it comes with your custom macros now the app is like i think the price point ended up being 14.99 a month or for everything or it comes out to 100 a year if you pay for just the whole year which is only like eight bucks a month or something so um worth it this is your opportunity where you will get a custom email from me every time you submit your numbers your weight your height your goals and you will get back an email that tells you your macros and how to follow them. And then the videos in the app will teach you how to track. But understand, we can't guess anymore. This is the end of the guessing era. We're not trying to guess our way to our goals or else these roller coaster fluctuations are gonna continue for a long time. We're looking for that structure in the system where we can beat our own habits by putting some objectivity, some objectivity into the situation so that your subjectivity gets removed, your ego is out of the picture and you no longer have to say, but I'm eating healthy. Because like I told you in the beginning, when someone told me when they were first help, I was first helping people out, they thought they were eating healthy and when it came down to it, they were the chicken they were talking about was olive oil soaked chicken thighs in a pan. They were eating like six a day. So we're talking about hundreds of grams of fat no awareness of that eating it thinking everything was going well they might as well have just been honestly loading up on burgers at that point when it comes to the caloric excess okay so were they eating healthy yes were they eating within the range of what they needed absolutely not so let's stop guessing let's get on this train together if you don't want the app honestly honest to god no pressure if this is all you needed was this video to get you onto your goals i'm happy that it helped you swear to god but if you want that extra level of structure, jump on over. We're going to get it done. We're going to do this together. Oak the app. I'll see you there.